This video will primarily cover the preparation of electrophysiological data for graphing in Python, including a demonstration of the setup process, data importation, and utilization of the code. Python is an open source language, which means that its source code is freely available and can be modified and distributed by anyone. Python's popularity as a programming language comes from its wide range of applications in scientific computing and data analysis. One of the key strengths of Python for scientific data analysis is its powerful graphing and visualization capabilities. With a variety of specialized libraries like Matplotlib, Pandas, and NumPy, Python allows for the easy creation of clear and informative graphs that can be customized to fit the specific needs of a scientific study. Python's ability to handle large data sets, perform complex mathematical operations, and automate repetitive tasks also makes it a valuable tool for scientific research. Overall, Python's versatility and ease of use make it an ideal choice for scientists looking to create informative and visually appealing graphs from their data. Now let's go over how to set up your data in Excel to prepare for the use in Python. This is an example of what kind of Excel sheet the Christie Lab uses to organize data. You have your X values here on the left, which include the values for the 20 minute baseline and the hour post conditioning. There are also columns prepared and labeled for calculating the average of each time point across slices, as well as one for the calculation of the standard error of the mean. At the top, is where we title which protocol the slices belong to. This example is labeled for slices that underwent a traumatic brain injury protocol where the electrophysiological recordings were taken from the dentate gyrus and stimulated at 10 Hz. We also have a region to label the rig, slice, and date with its animal ID in order to keep the data organized and easy to come back to if need be. Once this spreadsheet is set up, it is time to fill it with data. Here we have an example of what we would want to include in our data set. We are going to copy this entire right-hand column, which is indicative of the percent change EPSP for both baseline and post conditioning recordings. We will then paste it into the first column of our prepared spreadsheet. Remember to special paste by values. Next, we will fill in the information about the slice. In this case, the rig we used to record the slice was rig jug. The slice used was L8 and the day and animal ID were PID1 for post-injury day 1, M2 for male 2, TBI for traumatic brain injury, and these experiments were performed on May 17th. As you continue to collect data, this is what your spreadsheet should look like, with each column representing a different slice. Now you'll want to calculate the average at each time point across each slice, which can be shown here. The same will be done for the standard error of the mean and the formula for that is shown on screen now. Once this is complete, we can begin to build the spreadsheet that will be used for Python. Similar to our last spreadsheet, we want to have a column for our X values, and then following this, we want to alternate average percent change EPSP data and the standard error of the mean data. It is important to note that whatever you decide to use as the titles for your average percent change EPSP data, is what will be present in the legend when Python makes your plot. So be careful. You don't have to worry about the SEM titles as they will not show up in the plot by name. So now that we know what the spreadsheet means, let's fill in the missing columns. We'll go back to the spreadsheet we were working in and take the average percent change EPSP data and the SEM data and copy these and paste them into the missing columns. I have already saved this as a regular Excel file but we will want to save again as a CSV file. And this is important as Python is only able to read the data in this format. Before we get into the code, I will show you how to set up data for bar plots. Here we are back at our completed spreadsheet with all of the slices we need for our data set. How you display your data is up to you, but I'm going to show you a bar graph that shows the average percent change EPSP in the last five minutes of the post conditioning recording plotted with each individual data point that is representative of what makes up the average. So let's go to the bottom here where we can see the last five data points. 
Let's average the last five minutes of the data points, and then we will do the same for all slices. I'll do this by clicking and dragging the formula to make this quicker. We then need to copy and paste all of these values into a different spreadsheet that will eventually be saved as a CSV file. As a quick tip, we will copy these values and then when we paste, we will right click and hover over the special paste option and choose transpose. This will take all of our data and change it from a horizontal position to a vertical position. Once it is in a vertical position, we can copy these and move them to our next spreadsheet. The spreadsheet for our bar graphs looks a little different than what we had previously for our plots. The Python code will automatically calculate the SEM values for our bar graphs, so we don't need to worry about them having a separate column in this case. Let's focus on filling in the empty columns here. We will label our titles as we want to see them in the graph. So here we will call it injury PID1. This meaning that the animal underwent a TBI protocol and the day it was used for electrophysiological experiments was on post-injury day one. We will paste our values that we transposed previously under this column. Again, I have already saved this as a normal Excel file, but we will now go to save this as a CSV file. As remember, Python can only read data in this format. We are now ready to make graphs in Python. You can download Python at python.org slash downloads and choose whichever interface is appropriate for the device you are using. Python has an editor called idle, which you can use to code. But for this video, we will be using Visual Studio Code as the editor. This program can be downloaded for free and is a nicer, more user-friendly program to use to code. So here's the code we will be using to produce these graphs. Feel free to pause the video to take a closer look at the code, but for now, let's walk through what each section does. Python has a lot of libraries that are used to perform different tasks. Here, we have matplotlib, which is responsible for plotting the graphs, matplotlib.markers, which is a sub-library for the error bars in the graphs, and numpy, which is responsible for computational analysis. This next section is responsible for not only displaying significance, but also what type of significance is shown on the bar graphs. Here we can see that three asterisks is for a p-value less than 0.0001, two asterisks is for a p-value less than 0.001, and so on and so forth. You are able to change these values to however you would like your significance to be displayed. We then have a section for importing our data from the CSV files we just created. Let's stop here and import the data. First, we will import the data for the plot graph, find the data in the folder you saved it to, and copy first the path name and paste it here. Then copy the file name and paste it directly after the path name. Don't forget to put a backward slash between the path name and the file name, otherwise you will throw an error. You can see here that the data will be imported twice for the plot graphs, and this is because the first time, Python only reads through the CSV headings, which is the first row in our CSV file, and then the second time it will read through the data. This next section of code allows Python to read your CSV file and only plot every other column. For example, Python will only plot data points that correspond to your percent change EPSP data, and not that for your SEM data. It will also import the headings we made into the legend that will appear on the graph. Lastly, we have a large block of code here that is responsible for the customization of our plot graph. We can change the colors, add X and Y labels, and if you can think it, you can code it. In terms of plotting the bar graphs, we have a very similar setup. We will import the CSV files in the same way as the plots, and again, we have this big block of code that is responsible for customizing the bar graph. The last part of the code here is how Python is able to display significance on the bar graphs. Starts reflects where you would like your bracket to begin and ends is where you would like your bracket to end. For this particular graph, we have two different sets of bars that display significance. We have a bracket that will show significance between injury PID1 and sham PID1 and another bracket that will show significance between injury PID1 and injury PID7. The number of asterisks is assigned to these brackets in this part of the code. Now we are finally able to run the code and see our graphs. Remember to have plt.show at the end of your code so the graphs will generate. Let's click play and see what the graphs look like. Studio Visual Code will plot both graphs simultaneously since we did all the coding in one file, but let's focus on one graph at a time. 
Here we have the bar graph. The gray dots represent each individual data point in that group, while the bar is representative of the average of all of these data points put together. Error bars are plotted in black, and the significance bars are shown that link the two groups that are significantly different. Now onto the plot graphs. They should look like this, where we have the dotted line that marks zero on the x-axis, and you should have different traces that represent each group. The legend shows which trace is which, and remember that these groups are the same that we assigned as the headers in our CSV files. In summary, this video covered how to set up your in vitro electrophysiological data in a manner that can be easily understood and used for the purpose of graphing in Python. The code used in this video can be found on our website, which is linked in the description below. Keep your current flowing and your signals firing, and we'll see you next time.